Can I recreate my husband's favorite convenience food for less money, better flavor, and not much more time or effort? Welcome to episode two of this journey as I attempt to make homemade Marie Callender's turkey pot pie. So Marie Callender's turkey pot pie, chicken pot pie, those are really the only two as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, my husband and I both actually have a pretty long history with this convenience food. It is one that we actually both like. Uh, it was a real special treat for him in his bachelor days. It's like every once in a while he'd, he'd treat himself <laughs> to a Marie Callender's turkey pot pie or chicken pot pie. And uh, my mother actually liked to do the same. Uh, she would every once in a while treat herself to a frozen Marie Callender's, uh, the mini turkey pot pie or chicken pot pie. And I actually liked it okay myself as well. I find it kind of a little one note and a little too salty for my taste. I mean, what else is new? That's just me and convenience food. It's all too salty for me, but I do like it. And I have made homemade pot pies, but not that often. I'll usually opt for a more rustic one like shepherd's pie. So I was curious to see how much time this takes, how much money it costs, and how much better it actually is than the Marie Callender's version to see if it's actually worth it. So let's find out. I'm starting out by making a very simple pie dough. You can find the amounts in the video description below. I have a written recipe. But anyway, I am just blending together some cold butter with some all-purpose flour. There is a little teeny tiny bit of salt in there too. And you don't want to work it too much with your fingers because you don't want to melt the butter. That'll make your pie crust really tough. You want it nice and light and flaky. And then ice water. Um, this step of the process uh, really will vary depending on how humid it is the day you're making your pie crust, uh, etc. But err on the side of adding a little less water um, because your pie crust will hydrate well, it is resting. So I do not want to knead this at all. I'm really just kind of squeezing it until it all comes together into this rough shaggy ball. It's not going to look pretty. It's not like if I tried to roll it out now, it would not work very well. And as you can see, um, I, it was just a little bit too dry. So at this point you can sprinkle in just a little bit more water if you need to. And don't worry if it's not really coming together because it will come together while it's resting in the fridge. So the best way to do that is to use plastic wrap. If you want to save money here, you can always like reuse a produce bag. And I'm just kind of whacking it into shape with a rolling pin so it's a little flatter and it will be more the shape I want it to be. And then while the dough is resting in the fridge, I'm gonna be making the filling, which is basically just a very, very thick turkey stew. So I have here, actually, this is leftovers from our Thanksgiving turkey. Um, it is late January as I film this. So this, this turkey is, you know, a couple months old. It was in the freezer, so it has not gone bad. I just picked off about two cups worth of leftover cooked breast meat and put it in here for later. Uh, I also have cream. Uh, if you look on the ingredients list of the Marie Callender's pot pie, like some of the main ingredients are just a bunch of starches, like cornstarch, potato starch. That's how it gets its creaminess. There's like no dairy, or if there is, there's like less than 2% dairy. Uh, but thickening it with cream tastes so much better. Um, and this is gonna be where a lot of my added expense comes from if my pot pie winds up being actually expensive. <laughs> Uh, in addition to cream, um, I'm also using homemade broth. This actually, it, it looks like it's Nancy's yogurt, but it's not Nancy's yogurt. I just put my homemade broth in leftover yogurt containers. Uh, this is, it happens to be homemade duck broth. You don't have to use homemade duck broth. Uh, but basically, the theory is um, it could have been homemade turkey broth if I didn't already use it, and it would have been free because in order to make this, I use the leftover bones uh, after I've cooked my bird, along with the leftover veggie scraps from things like carrots and celery and onion, which you can't see because it's white. So broth I'm actually counting as free, even though you know you could buy it store-bought and that costs money. But if you make it homemade, it's basically free because you use scraps. So speaking of those carrots, celery, and onions, I also have 
carrots, celery, onions, and garlic. Uh, th these pot pies are mostly just gravy, turkey, and then a little bit of other stuff. So the onions, the celery, and the garlic are more just to help build the flavors in the sauce. And the carrots, I want them to actually be like, you know, chunks of carrot that you find while you're eating your pot pie. And these are all wonderful vegetables. They're extremely cheap, readily available all year round, and they last a super long time in your fridge. I bought all of these like a month ago. I also have some frozen peas, about a third of a cup because the pot pies do have peas in them and they're a great addition. I also have a little flour. As I mentioned earlier, the Marie Callender's pot pie has a lot of like potato starch, cornstarch, other starches to make it creamy and, and thick and all that. I'm actually gonna uh, thicken mine with a roux, which is butter. This is two tablespoons of butter and probably one to two tablespoons of this is all purpose flour. And again, that's gonna add a little more expense. Cornstarch would have been so much cheaper, but this is gonna taste a lot better. So let's get started. I also have the veggie scraps that I mentioned earlier to make the broth. These are like leftover from various other cooking projects I've done. I pop it in a yogurt container, because that's yogurt containers, and I put it in the freezer with all my other yogurt containers, so I can't tell what anything is. Also, last but not least, I do have salt and pepper to season the pot pie. And I'm also gonna throw in a little thyme just cause it tastes delicious with poultry. Okay, now let's get started. Okay, my butter is foaming and the pan is hot. So let's start building the sauce with the onion. I'm not gonna go ahead and add the celery too. Cause I want those to dissolve. Pinch of salt. I don't want to get any color on this. So medium, medium, low heat. Okay, the onion and celery have wilted quite a bit and the yard people are super noisy outside, so it's time to add the garlic. I didn't add this at the start because otherwise it would brown or burn, which I definitely do not want. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add these carrots. Just one carrot chopped up and peeled. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, the Marie Callender's pot pie, um, it gets its creaminess and its thickness from just a bunch of starch, a bunch of cornstarch, potato starch. And I'm gonna do a roux instead. A roux is butter and flour cooked together. And I already have two tablespoons of butter in here, so I'm just gonna add like about another two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I know this isn't a real tablespoon, I'm just eyeballing, because that's how I cook. Not following a recipe either, by the way. <laughs> I'm just kind of winging this. I've made stuff like it enough times that I, I'm just not gonna bother with the recipe. So you wanna cook out this flour a little bit, otherwise you'll have like raw flour taste in your dish. So I'm just gonna saute this for a couple minutes, let it cook, and then I'll add my liquids. All right, now I'm going to add the duck broth. Nice and steamy. That was about a cup of duck broth. Again, doesn't have to be duck broth, broth. You could even use vegetable broth, really. It's just uh, poultry broth is gonna amp up the poultry flavor. And it's basically, at this point, just like gravy with some carrots and celery, onion, and garlic, and it smells great. So while you weren't looking, I diced up all of the turkey meat. I'm gonna dump that in. I'm gonna be gentle when I stir this because I don't want to break up the turkey meat too much. You know what? That could use more broth. That's what happens when you don't use a recipe. If you're wondering why the broth looks so thick and gloppy, it's because it's cold. And uh, when you make broth out of bones, uh, bones have gelatin in them. So that just makes the broth really super thick when it's cold. You know what? That could possibly even use more broth, but I'll hold off for a moment. <laughs> A little salt and a little pepper. Uh, it's probably like a quarter, half teaspoon. Probably a quarter teaspoon. And a pinch of thyme. That was about eighth of a teaspoon. Mmm, smells good. Mm, yeah. I think a quarter cup of cream should do it. 
Hopefully it does because I am running out of cream and I need it for my tea. Simmering gently to thicken up the sauce properly. It looks like a pretty good consistency. It's not too loose, it's not too thick. I need to give it a little taste now for seasoning. Ooh, oh, that tastes like Thanksgiving. <laughs> my husband might find it not quite salty enough, so I'm gonna add a little more. That was perfect for me. Usually my rule of thumb is make it perfect for me and then add just a tiny bit more salt and then it'll be slightly too salty for me and not quite salty enough for him. And that way we both suffer together because marriage. I'm just gonna let this simmer for a couple more minutes to thicken properly and come together. And then I'm gonna turn off the heat and stir in the peas at the end. I do not want these peas to really cook at all. Otherwise they're gonna get all gray and disgusting. Off the heat. And I'm gonna let this cool down just a bit. I mean, it will cool down while I'm preparing the crust. I just don't wanna put this piping hot into the crust. So I have my chilled rusted pie dough right here. And I'm gonna be making two pot pies. I do not know if this is like exactly enough dough for that. It might be more than enough. I hope it's not less than enough. So that basically means I need to make four circles out of this. So I'm gonna cut this into four pieces. And then as I roll them out, I'm gonna to try to coax them into more circular shapes and probably fail because I'm not very good at rolling out pastry. And you know, it's okay if it cracks a bunch because Marie Callender's pot pies do that too. Pieces of the pie crust inevitably fall off. So I'm just being authentic. That is the reason why my pie crusts are so craggy. I'm using these ramekins because they're about the right size comparatively to a Marie Callender's pot pie. I'm going to compare the calories of uh, my pot pies versus Marie Callender's pot pies, uh, just so I can get the proper like um, volume comparison. So it's always funny trying to coax a round piece of pie dough into like a deep dish. You just kind of have to fold it on itself and cheat a little bit. And ideally you want a pretty good overhang. Mine's not very consistent because again, I'm not the best pastry person, but that's okay. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. Okay, I've got my two top crusts rolled out and I have my bottom crust in the fridge and here's my slightly cooled down filling. I just didn't want it to be screaming hot when I put it in the crust. And I have my frozen Marie Callender's pot pie. And so I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400. I'm gonna bake uh, all of these pies at the same time. I'm gonna make my two pies and this Marie Callender's frozen pot pie. Since this is frozen, I'm gonna give it a head start of about 10, 15 minutes and then I'm gonna add my pies. Uh, you need to cook this for 65 minutes in the oven. So yeah, it's one of those convenience foods that like, it's convenient because it requires very, very little effort, but you still have to like plan in advance. You can't just like, ah, I'm hungry. I need to eat something, grab something, eat it. You have to like be like, oh, I will be hungry in an hour. So I will put a pie in the oven. Uh, but yeah, let's build the pies. So the nice thing about these pies is because uh, they don't have to be like, I don't have to be able to take them out of the molds. You're supposed to just kind of eat it right out of the container. I don't have to worry about uh, crimping it beautifully or anything so that it can be taken out. You know, I think I might have just the right amount of filling. If I can find a spoon that I like. A spoon that I like. Oh, that one might do. I'm just going to scoop it directly into the raw crust because that's what the Marie Pop Calendar's pot pies are. Yeah, it looks like pretty much exactly half of the filling got into this one. I was worried I'd have too much filling and that I'd have to have a sad little like third pot pie that's super small in one of my smaller ramekins. But I think we're okay. If it looks sort of like dog food, you're doing it right. I have a feeling these pot pies are a lot more generously filled <laughs> than Marie Callender's. My general experience eating Marie Callender's pot pie is like very crust forward which I don't hate. I like how the gravy gets uh, sopped up on the crust. Every last bit. And now I'm gonna lid these things. A lot of extra crust to play with. So you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna 
perform a little surgery and add some of this crust where I need it on the bottom so that it can overlap properly. Because it would be nice to have something pretty for the thumbnail, you know. So what I like to do, because I don't like wasting pie dough, I mean, you can, like, cut off the excess bits and, like, roll them up into pseudo-cinnamon rolls or whatever. And I do do that sometimes if I have a lot of extra pie dough. But usually I prefer to just kind of scrunch it all over on itself like this and just have a giant edge to the pie. And I don't bother doing anything decorative with it because I suck at that anyway. So there you go. <laughs> There's a pie. I'm just going to poke some cute little holes in it to make it look pretty, but also to let some steam escape while it cooks. Oh, my head is cut off. I'm not babish. Okay, so my two homemade Marie Callender's turkey pot pies are ready for the oven. Now I just need to get my store-bought Marie Callender's turkey pot pie ready for the oven. So the only prepping you have to do with one of these is you're supposed to just make like a little foil skirt around the outside so that edge crust doesn't burn. I don't think I'm going to have to do that with my homemade ones since my edges are so incredibly thick. So hey, another bonus. Foil! And to prevent uh, oven grossness, I'm going to put this on a cookie sheet. I'm going to put this in the oven for about 10, 15, 10 minutes, and then I'm going to add my pies. So uh, I was going to put the Marie Callender's pot pie in the oven while I was getting the other pies ready so that they'd all be done roughly around the same time so we could taste test them side by side, but I forgot to do that and I put them all in at the same time. And then now my pies are, they looking like they're almost done. <laughs> they look really nice and they smell great. Uh, so we might not be able to eat them side by side. <laughs> These are screaming hot right now, so we have to let them sit for a few minutes. <sighs> okay, here's pie number A. Number A. Pie number A. Pie number B. <laughs> Cat. A was Definitely the Marie Callender's. It's good. It's what I remember. Seven. Okay. And then the other one, which you think is the homemade? Uh, your thoughts? No. <laughs> <laughs> your thoughts. It was so different. Um, for one thing, the texture of the meat. It actually, like, tastes like, uh, or not tastes, but you know, the, the, the feel of it was like a piece of turkey. Off a bird. <laughs> off, yeah, off a carcass as opposed to the, like, processed meat stuff they put in the um, Marie Callender's. Big girl. You, we know, you know which is which. You don't need the blindfold anymore. Okay. Take off the blindfold. <laughs> um, put seasoning to your taste in a bite of the homemade so that you can get a better... No. I would happily eat either of these or both of them. I'd probably call this an eight. It's not as good as your salmon chowder pie. <laughs> All right, so victory. He actually preferred the homemade version this time. For those of you who saw my homemade stovetop Kraft mac and cheese last time. It still has a slightly sour taste to it. I still maintain that the homemade version is much tastier than the boxed version, but what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, I was pleased that he actually did like my homemade version better than the Marie Callender's, but you know, he only gave it like, what, an eight versus a seven, so only one point better. I would say personally, like if I were grading these two pot pies on a scale of one to 10, I think I would give the Marie Callender's like a five and my homemade one probably a nine. So to me, it's significantly better, the homemade version, yet I still like the Marie Callender's version. So let's look at the numbers, the math to see 
ooh, how much more worth it it actually is, if it's even worth it. So I itemized every single component of the price of this pie. I'm not dinging myself for the entire cost of buying the whole pound of butter, for example. I'm dinging myself only for the actual butter I used in the pie. I think that's a more realistic way of calculating the price of things rather than charging yourself like the full price for everything you had to buy because all the leftover ingredients I can use in other recipes later. They don't go to waste. So anyway, um, in the crust I used one and a quarter cups of flour plus two tablespoons for rolling. So that is 17 cents of flour. I used a pinch of salt, which is basically free. I used another pinch of salt later and I'm gonna combine those two pinches of salt to be like one cent. <laughs> salt is really, really cheap. Cool thing about salt. Um, seven eighths of a stick of butter for 77 cents uh, and three to six tablespoons of ice water, which are free. I mean, sure, I technically have to pay my water bill and my refrigeration bill, but if we were gonna get into all those little things, that, that would just get way too complicated. So let's just count it free. Um, for the filling. So this is one of the areas where you could be a lot cheaper. I did not use a factory farm raised turkey. I used about two thirds of a pound, uh, two cups, of leftover cooked turkey breast. And you can get turkey cheap, factory farm raised turkey at the supermarket for like 50 cents a pound around Thanksgiving time. So you could, I could have totally spent much less money than I did on this, but I don't get factory farm raised animal products. So I spent $2 and 16 cents on the turkey that I used. I used one carrot for eight cents, a third of a cup of frozen peas for 10 cents, because that was exactly a 20th of my two pound bag, well, 1.99 bag of frozen peas. I used a quarter of a cup of minced yellow onion for seven cents, one clove of garlic for five cents, one and a half cups of homemade duck broth, which again, I'm calling free. This is another area where if you don't save your scraps um, and don't make your own broth from scratch, you would have to buy it at the store and it would not be free. However, um, I'm using pre-cooked turkey that I cooked uh, that came on bones and I'm using carrot and celery and onion in this pot pie. So I would have generated turkey scraps and carrot scraps and onion scraps and uh, celery scraps anyway, you know, enough to, with which I could make broth for free. So I'm still gonna count it as free. Um, two tablespoons of butter for 22 cents, two tablespoons of flour for two cents, a quarter cup of cream for 30 cents. Now this is another one I use pasture raised dairy products. So you could get factory farm cream for much cheaper than this, but I don't get factory farm products. So 30 cents for a quarter cup of cream, heavy cream, by the way. Miney, get off the tripod. Half a teaspoon of salt, one cent. This is where I'm throwing in that one penny for, for salt. An eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper and an eighth of a teaspoon of thyme, one cent each. And also I calculated all of the calories for all of these ingredients as well so that I could compare apples to apples with the Marie Callender's pot pie. So the two homemade pot pies together are 2,200 calories. So 1,100 calories per pot pie and $3.97 for both pies total. So each pie is $1.99, it's like, an actual price that you'd get at a store. How, how likely is that? <laughs> Meanwhile, each Marie Callender's pot pie is 960 calories. So they're a little lower in calories and 249 each. I, I looked up basically the cheapest uh, place you could get a pot pie for now. I think it's Walmart or Target uh, and it's about 249 per frozen pot pie. Now, if we were controlling for calories, if this um, Marie Callender's pot pie were also 1100 calories, it would cost $2.85 per pot pie, which means that my homemade pot pies are about two thirds the price of Marie Callender's pot pie, even though I am using like high quality pasture raised turkey and cream and butter and such. They're still two thirds the price of Marie Callender's pot pie. But is that worth it? <laughs> so now we get into effort. Uh, the homemade pot pies, I'd say the total active cooking time is about an hour. You're looking at about an hour. Uh, and that's even if you are an experienced cook. Like if you are not an experienced cook, it probably take even longer than that because you have to kind of figure out how to wrestle with that pie dough for one thing. But Marie Callender's pot pie, that's like two minutes, <laughs> two minutes of active cooking time. You know, it's like an hour of waiting, but two minutes of active cooking time. So it takes you like 30 times longer to cook the homemade pot pie than it does to just pop one from the freezer into the oven. So whether or not it's worth it, uh, quote unquote, to make this pie from scratch versus buying it at the grocery store, it honestly just depends on who you are, where you're at, how much spare time you have, 
what your priorities are. And where I'm at now, uh, to be honest, I, I'm kind of going through a phase where I don't want to spend too much time cooking. I realized I was spending like three hours a day cooking <laughs> and I'm like, that's too much time. I need, I need more time for myself to just enjoy life. I enjoy cooking and I enjoy eating good food, but you know, I think I was doing too much of that and I needed to scale things back. So where I'm at now, I kind of feel like every once in a while, once a year or so, I think it's definitely worth it to make the pot pie from scratch because I do think it tastes a lot better. But since it really is more like a treat for my husband and he doesn't like my homemade version that much better than the uh, Marie Callender's version, for me, I'd say it's actually not worth making it homemade, even though uh, to me it tastes a lot better and it's two thirds the price. But who cares what I think? What do you guys think? Do you think it would be worth making this homemade or would you rather just pop the Marie Callender's pot pie into the oven? Let me know. Thanks for watching and thank you to my lovely patrons for supporting this little channel. And be sure to tune in next month when I tackle homemade Dinty More Beef Stew.